Hi, it's Martin and Arlo, and we're here for another bake with us. Um, as promised today, we're going to do baked donuts. And we have some that just came out of the oven, so we're just going to jump straight into the action. Okay, so will you brush those with butter? Let's see, you do that over here. Anthem, you can come show this. Maybe I'll talk about it for just a second. So we're making the um, yeasted donut recipe, which is on the King Arthur website. It was written by Aaron McDowell. Yeah, I just go ahead and paint them pretty good. Um, it's the yeast raised donuts. Uh, we'll put a link next to the video someplace. You'll be able to click on it and go check it out. Um, the recipe that Aaron wrote is for uh, fried donuts and we're doing them baked, which is, uh, I don't know, baked donut is a bit of an oxymoron to me. Um, I've, I've only really ever messed with the fried ones uh, and not very much at that. I've eaten a heck of a lot of them though. Um, so, but we're baking them. We don't have a whole bunch of extra oil. Um, I think the recipe is for six cups and I'm not gonna use six cups just to fry some donuts today. So, we're gonna bake them. And we've been testing them and they've been coming out actually really nice. They're very light and you don't really feel like you're missing much. You can go a little quicker because we want to get it on there while they're still warm. So these are just out of the oven um, and Arlo is buttering them. And we're buttering them so that the sugar that we toss them in will adhere. Okay, so you keep going with that. Move it a good clip, uh, get it all around. You can be kind of messy because it'll sort of slide down yeah. as they go. Are they super hot or it's not too bad? I mean, it's not too bad, but it's kind of hot. Kind of so hot, but not too bad. It's not it's warm-ish. Warm-ish, okay. It's still warm to the touch. When you think of donuts, what do you think of? Uh, I don't know. Like, what's a place that you like to get a donut from? Mm, well, I mean, when we, I don't know. How about in Maine when we're at Congdon's? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay, so in Maine we like to go to Congdon's. There's a woman uh, here in the Upper Valley whose name is Muriel who made them for, she made the same recipe for like 45 years. Um, Muriel's are cake donuts, whereas these are yeasted, and the yeasted is the flavor that I grew up with. I didn't know a cake donut, really, uh, until I kind of came to New England, maybe. Um, and so, I like the flavor of yeasted. I'll eat a cake donut, too, no problem. Um, I also think of, when I think of donuts, I also think of Holy Donut in Portland, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so, donuts. um, Holy Donut actually has a, a donut flavor which has crystallized ginger in it, and that's kind of what I've made here today, although I'm gonna show you the regular, um, just spiced uh, raised donut that Erin uh, has in the recipe. Okay, so let's go back over here for a second. Um, so this dough was mixed a couple of hours ago, and you're gonna see, when I mix, when I mix this, you're gonna see that it's, quite a sticky dough. It's quite a soft dough. Um, I would say it's borderline like painful to work with, but I'm going to show you some tips that will, that hopefully will help you a little bit. But it's a very soft dough. Um, but the good news is that that very soft dough makes a super, super tender, tender donut. Okay. So, In order to work with this, um, I feel like mine is a little bit extra, extra sticky today. Um, I've probably done, in the past few days, I've done maybe four or five batches, um, and this is pretty sticky. But uh, it's working and it makes really, really good donuts. So I'm putting a little bit of flour down. Um, I don't want to put an excessive amount of flour down, but I just want to make sure that it has enough not to stick. So you probably saw I floured the, the work surface as well. I'm working on this board today. I like working on the counter, but if I'm cutting with things on the board, if I'm cutting with um, tools on the board, I mean, partly I don't want to scratch the counter, but partly it also seems to cut a little bit better on a board um, for me personally. So just enough flour to where it won't stick to my hands. And if you want, some people will flour the cutter too. Uh, that doesn't feel completely necessary to me. Um, Aaron's instructions are to roll the dough to one quarter inch thick. And initially I thought, hmm, that's gonna be too thin. 
because I thought that the dough wasn't going to um, rise up that well because we're not going into hot fat, it's just a hot oven. And I thought that going into the hot fat, I would get a lot better puff, and I still believe that, but if I let them rise long enough, I still get the height that I'm looking for, and the height is part of what contributes to the nice eating quality where you don't immediately notice that you're eating something that's baked. Um, so I think that's about a quarter inch, let's see here. It's right around a quarter, it might even be just a little bit thinner than a quarter, so I'm gonna go back some. Okay, how's the donuts go? Okay, so Arlo buttered these, both sides. We're gonna let them chill for just another second and then we're gonna to toss them in a sugar that we have some spices in. And then uh, we're gonna fill them with pastry cream because why not? Okay. So, Arlo, will you grab me one of those trays with parchment on it, pretty please? Thanks, buddy. Okay. So, we can make big donuts, um, we can make smaller donuts. Um, this is like a two and three quarter inch. Yeah, that's like a two, it's just under a three inch cutter. Um, Aaron says two and a half to three. Um, I think that, let's do, are we gonna fill these or do you just want them powdered? We should definitely fill them. Fill them, okay, yes. all right, all right. So. So, all right, so let's just do the same size then. So we're gonna do two and three quarter inches. And if you don't have a metal cutter, um, what can you do? Well, I mean, look around the house. Um, I mean, I think a lot of people have cut biscuits over the years with uh, glass jars and other things. The one thing I would say, the advantage of a metal cutter or a cutter with a cutting edge is that it will rise a little bit more evenly. And that's true of a lot of things. If you have a um, if you have a glass jar, it kind of like mashes the the dough a little bit. So I'm gonna use this cutter. And if you wanted, you could go back through and you could cut out the centers. I don't have my center. I don't know where it is, but I do have a piping tip, and the piping tip worked okay. Um, I think the piping tip would have been a little bit better with a bigger one because. My holes closed just a little bit, but I think it's going to be okay. All right, so cut those and move them over. Oop. It's a soft dough, right? It's a very soft Whoa. dough. Why don't you continue cutting and I'll move? Good. There we go. All right. So we made a pastry cream. I mean, you could make an infused pastry cream, and certainly there are pastry cream recipes on the website too, on the King Arthur website. Have a look there. This is, the, the pastry cream that I made is just a vanilla pastry cream, nothing fancy. So we go in, and, oops, that one not quite cut. So when you cut them, you, you might need to just jiggle it for a second just to make sure that it's cut all the way through, right? But you know what, even a misshapen donut is a pretty delicious donut. Are we gonna use the scraps? Yeah, we'll use the scraps. If you don't want any scrap, you can cut squares. I mean, that's a good trick with biscuits too. Let's see if we can get one more over here maybe. That's pretty good. So what we can do with the scrap, I think we're gonna leave it right there because I've got a full tray. Okay. What you can do with the scrap is, you don't wanna knead it, like don't work it with your hands, but just bring it together a little bit and put it in something and cover it. Uh, I'm just going to put it on a plate right now. Um, so I'll let it kind of come together and I'll very gently pat it, pat it out or roll it and then uh, you can cut additional shapes. Just like biscuits, they're not going to be quite as nice in, um, the second time around, but they're still going to be pretty good. Alright, so move these things over. So, let's talk about this for just a second. Um, these need to proof. Remember that they are yeasted, right? This is a bread product in a way. It's a yeasted product. And so they need to proof or rise one last time. Right now they're in the range of like a quarter to probably three-eighths or somewhere around there, not quite a half an inch. And 
these should proof until they're at least three quarters of an inch, um, which, you know, depending on ambient conditions might take 45 minutes or an hour. Um, you want to proof them covered. So, where's my bag? Here we go. Here's a trick. If you, if you don't have a place which is draft free, you need to find one because if these dry out on top, they'll crust over and then during baking they won't expand. Um, if you wanted to really guard against that, what you could do is you could take a little bit of butter and just brush them at the beginning of proof and that butter will help maintain that sort of supple quality and allow them to expand. Um, you've seen my trick before, what I like to do with something like this is put it inside a bag and then if you gather some air like that, um, it will hold, and this is just a trash bag that we can, you know, reuse or whatever. So that will hold like that. Um, and like I said, 45 minutes to an hour, but it depends. If you're in Florida, like I said the other day, you might be waiting for, you know, half an hour, 25 minutes. Um, up here, we had frost this morning, so it's, it's chilly and these are not in a hurry to get anywhere. So you just wait. Wait until they're about three quarters of an inch or so. Um, and then you should be good to go. Okay, so let's set those aside. Um, what have I forgotten? Anything? Oh. I'm just kidding. Give me just a second. Okay. Let's talk about these donuts. So we let them chill for just a minute. They're really, really light. They definitely feel sort of air filled. Um, so they're very, very light. Uh, what should I say about that? Oh, one, one note. Um, because this recipe is for yeast raised donuts, which are fried, um, so we're baking these. So uh, the oven is 350. And these took about 14 minutes, about 14 minutes, 350 for about 14, but you're gonna to wanna to check on your oven. Um, I've got some white sugar and I have, um, what do I have in there? Nutmeg, clove, and a little bit of black pepper. That sounds kind of crazy, but um, I like the spice that the black pepper will bring. And because I added a little bit of crystallized ginger to this, because I'm kind of going with this like, chai spice hack on the donuts. Um, let's see how these are going. Yeah, they look pretty good. More what buttered or not? I think more butter, maybe a little bit. Can you hit them one more time with yeah. the butter? Just a little, just bring it over here and I'll show you what I, we can do. If you let them sit, they won't take the butter quite as well. So let's do this here, watch. Just a little bit. They already have it on the underside. What I'm trying to do is just make sure that the show side, like the top side, looks especially nice, right? So I'm just hitting them one more time. Pick up a little bit more. Okay. Let's see how that goes. Go for it. You just like put like the sugar on the top. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It smells really nice. It smells good, right? It's got that kind of spicy, Quality, right? Okay. That's good. Throw a few more in there, like maybe five or six. Mm, okay. Because it's fine. I'll show you what we'll do. Just throw them in there. Yep. They're, they're like soft, but they're not so fragile that we can't kind of watch this. So we did the same thing today, you, um, and I did some with powdered sugar. I'll show you those in just a second. And we already made sure that they're okay. What did you guys think? They're really good. Super good, right? Um, if you like the powdered sugar ones, we did some the other day as a test, and we just put, um, we did powdered sugar on the outside, and then we put some preserves into a pastry bag, and we, um, just piped them in. 
and that worked actually really well. Okay, so I'm going to do two more of these. Two more of these? Yeah, I'm going to do like this. I'm going to let you take the rest of that. Just put those in there. Put them in there. And then I'm going to have you take them over there and toss them for me while I just okay. work on these for a second. You're good. Put them on that tray right there for me, buddy. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So, how we're going to fill these is um, you just take a knife and put the knife in. Move it around a little bit depending on how much you want to put in there. What's your favorite donut at Congdon's, Anthem? Definitely just the plain glazed donut. Plain that'll, glazed, that'll man. That'll do it. Hard to beat. Yep. Hard to beat. I think with the plain glazed, um, you can taste, and I'm back to my old like song and dance. I think with the plain glazed, you can taste fermentation. And so I, I particularly like that one. Um, I like an apple fritter too, though. I mean, yeah, I, I never met an yeah, apple really fritter. Good. Yeah, that's good stuff. Okay, so vanilla pastry cream. Oh, I forgot to cut the tip off this thing. I'm not sure how this is going to work. The other day we used a tip, right? We used yeah, a tip to actually put it in there, but I think it's going to be okay. Yeah. You just push until you sort of feel it starting to come out. Yeah, no issue with uh, with not having a tip on there. It's totally fine. Let's see. Okay. So when I'm using the pastry bag, I'm holding at the end. Yeah. And I'm pushing from the end. And it... So nothing explodes out yeah, the back. Yeah, exactly. So nothing explodes out the back. Although it can happen. Okay, so these are almost done, and then I think what we'll do is we're There's gonna show the yeah, we have some more in there. Okay, we'll let you work on those in a minute. I think what I'm gonna do is finish these and set them aside for a second, yeah, and then we're going to I'm gonna do the mix real quickly. Okay, did everybody oop? I missed you. Okay. Set that aside. I'm gonna have you take those for a second, set them on the stove for me. Thank you very much. Okie dokie. All right, the mix. You know, just like always, things are out of order a little bit. And the reason for that is that um, bread takes time, right? Bread takes time. Um, but the nice thing about bread is that even if it takes two hours to make a dough. It's like it's not like you're chained to the kitchen that entire time. You can start a dough and then you can go and do something else and then come back and check out it. So it's not like active work. Okay, so in the bowl, um, I have all-purpose flour, um, yeast, there's a little bit of salt. I have a quarter cup of sugar and some spice. Uh, Aaron's recipe calls for half, half teaspoon of nutmeg. I think I've got that thing memorized now. Three cups of flour, one cup of um, milk, one egg, two tablespoons of butter. Anyway, it's on the website, um, yeasted, uh, yeasted Donuts. And she wrote a blog for it uh, that was in SIF. It's really good too. And Aaron is actually doing a, an Instagram takeover this very day on uh, the King Arthur website. Um, today is April Fool's. Um, so Erin's doing a takeover. She's like the pie queen and uh, is really fun and engaging. Okay, so come on in here, Anthony. Dry ingredients in the bowl. Uh, mix to combine. Can you grab me a white flexible scraper over there? You might have to rinse it off. You might have to look in the sink. Actually, that will Yeah, just grab one out of the sink, buddy. And rinse it off, obviously. Okay. There's that, uh, and I have some milk. The milk is lukewarm, and it should be lukewarm because we want to have a dough temperature that is not, you know, 65 degrees. So don't take your eggs and your milk straight out of the um, fridge and then expect the dough to do anything because dough doesn't like that. That's too cold. Um, so 
you know, throw your milk in one of these and leave it out, um, or throw it in the microwave for 30 seconds or something like that. Just bring it, uh, warm it up a little bit. I want this up to about, I would say if you're gonna temp it, I would say maybe between 105 and 110 degrees. So there goes the milk. Uh, one egg. Thanks. Hold on to that for just a second. Thank you, buddy. Uh, one egg, two tablespoons of butter, and the butter is mixed in with the vanilla already. Okie dokie. Can I hand you that? Can I trade you? Yeah. You're awesome. Okay. Um, so everything in the bowl. I'm showing the hand mix because I know that not everybody has a mixer. The first maybe two batches I did of this, I did in the in a you know a mixer, and then I thought, well, I should test it by hand to just to make sure that I feel like you know if I see any differences between the mixer and my hands. Um, but I didn't. I think these are great um, without using the mixer. So I'm using the. Um, I'm using the dough scraper because it helps me to clean the bowl and it's such a sticky soft dough that the scraper will be a really good tool. So, Aaron's instructions, which are really good, um, have you bring this together uh, and then let it sit for five minutes and then do some more kneading. And I think that's a great, uh, it's a great technique with a lot of doughs because it gives the flour a second to hydrate uh, and then it more easily uh, develops. And especially in the home environment where we don't have tools which develop the dough really well, uh, we don't have mixers like we do in the professional bakery, um, time is really your friend. So, and it works with bread doughs too. So if I'm making a sandwich loaf or something like that, if I mix ingredients until they're homogenous, and then I let it sit for five minutes, 10 minutes, half an hour, and then come back and knead, things will be much in a much, much better place. So, um, what I want to do is, I want to pretend that it's been five or 10 minutes. So we're gonna just pretend and come back in here, Anthem, and I'm gonna show you how I would go about mixing this. The dough is so sticky that if you put it out on the bench and you start trying to knead it, you're just gonna end up just absolutely gummed up. It's not gonna be an easy dough to work with. And so what I would recommend is that you leave things in the bowl and come over here, Anthem, I'm going to show you what I would do. Taking my dough scraper and I'm just working around the outside and I'm pushing it. I'm almost, let me see if I can do it in slow motion. I'm smearing it a little bit, smearing it just like that. Get your arm work out for the day. you'll see that it'll start to get a little more tuggy and it almost pull away from the bowl a little bit. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Let's see where I am temperature wise. See what's going on here. 74, so maybe a titch cooler than, I would be happy if it were in the 76 to 78 range. 74 is gonna be just fine, but what I might do is, and I mentioned this the other day, PJ has a blog that she recently wrote, like what, how, how can I make uh, an environment in my home which is really good for doughs? And she had some tips on there. Um, what I did today was I just took um, a large saute pan and I put warm water in the bottom and I set the bowl in the water, not boiling water, but just warm water. Set that in there and then put a plastic bag over the top and leave it and it worked really well. Um, that's a good That's a good hack. There's some other good ones on, um, on that article that PJ wrote. So um, the instructions are 90 to 120 minutes of fermentation. I haven't done less than two hours. Every time I've made this, I've done two hours. Um, there's no, the dough will not be bad at two hours, even at two and a half hours if it came off cool. If your house is cool and it takes a little longer, it's okay. Um, just wait, it'll be just fine. Okay, so there's the mix. 
What else have I, have I forgotten anything? Should we try a donut? Oh yeah. I think we should try a donut. Okay, so. These haven't been filled. Okay, that's all right. Arlo, bring the filled ones back over to where we're working, would you? So, you don't have to fill them. You can cut them, you know, you could have cut holes and then just tossed them with, um, you could have just cut holes too and then tossed them in powdered sugar. That's all I did here. Um, and I just want to show how sort of feathery and light these are. Very feathery, very light, and they're really nicely spiced. You've already tried a bunch of these. All right. We'll get you some too, Anthem. Okay. Should we try one of these? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's good. I think it could even go with a little bit more filling. I feel like I didn't quite overfill that one. Let's try this one. Mm, definitely not. I need to get my filling game on. Yeah, I think they could take some more, huh? Maybe I'm being a little skimpy. Fill them up. Try 10. Try 20. Maybe you'll get it right by the 20th one and see how it is. Mm. That's good. So, for this one, what I did was I took Aaron's basic yeasted raised donut. I left everything the same. For the half teaspoon of nutmeg, to the half teaspoon of nutmeg that she called for, I added some cinnamon. I added a little bit of clove and I added a little bit of black pepper. And then into the dough, I also added three quarters of a cup of crystallized ginger that I just chopped up finely. You don't have to do that. The plain basic one that she has was really good. But after making that like three or four times, I thought, well, it wouldn't be interesting if we mixed it up a little bit. And so we did this um, variation. Um, they're good, right? Oh my gosh, yes, definitely. <laughs> um, well, so I guess that's it for another installment of um, Bake With Us at uh, Martin and Arlo and Julie and Anthem and Clementine's house. And we're so happy that you are here with us. And it's been great to see how many people um, are finding this to be a salve of sorts during difficult days. Um, there is a silver lining, and I'm glad that you're here with us. So, cheers. I'm having cheers. another one. <laughs> <laughs> ching, ching.